Uh-oh. Oh, you know, this is taking a little bit. It's like the first time it's doing on the computer. Okay. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Uh, this is Clear Vision Wednesday. I am Trisha Kirby. So the name says Claudia Mullenweg. I'm actually guest hosting. I'm a member on Claudia's team, and we couldn't fix the name. So I was going to say Claudia on there, but I'm Trisha Kirby. I am happy to be here. I am going to be sharing a whole bunch of things today related to aligning your life purpose with your vision and your physical vision and a lot of tips and tricks to accomplishing what you really want to accomplish this year. So that's my, my goal for you. All right. Uh, so my name is Trisha Kirby. Um, as I said, I am a member on Claudia Mullenweg's vision, holistic vision team. I'm a coach. I'm an intuitive. I was born with intuitive abilities when I was a child and I, I had clairvoyant gifts for lack of a better way of putting it. I was psychic. I would see things before they happened. I would know things about people, places, events, uh, animals, animals, things that I had no way of knowing. And I, I hid these gifts really most of my life. They would kind of come out here and there, like I would know stuff about people. And so they would get this inclination that, oh, she like, she like really knows some stuff. She has some interesting abilities. Uh, but I still, I never used it really for a job or a purpose. And mostly because I felt judged by it. Um, I was kind of the oddball out having these abilities. And I think anybody else out there, if you are a healer or an empath or a sensitive person, or just somebody with some unusual gifts, you understand what I'm saying. This isn't always a world that welcomes that kind of uh, difference in life. So this time of year is my favorite time of year because it's it's the new year. It's a fresh start. And we have more energy this time of year around the idea of wanting to change our life for the better than any other time of year. And the neat thing about that is that it's it's a collective group energy. And it means that there's so many people intending and wanting and willing to being willing to create change in their life that we can all collectively sort of group and pull that energy together and it uplifts all of us. But one of the problems with that is that statistically, only about 40% of people actually set goals for the new year. And of that 40% of people who actually do sit down, maybe they write some intentions, they think about what they wanna change in their life, out of that 40% who make the goals, they actually take the time to make the goals, most of them, a walk. 92% give up on goals by the end of January. And in a poll, they did a, a biking study of millions of people who use this exercise app. And I believe it was around 108 million people. And they found that the exact day that most people give up on their goals is January 17th. So the good news is if you're still on your goal plan, we've already passed January 17th. So you're actually ahead of the game. You're in that 8% elite range <laughs> that is actually still moving forward on their goals. If you haven't, if you don't have goals yet, that's okay. We're still in that window. And we're going to talk about that today, how you can move forward on your vision goals, create a life vision and a purpose that's in alignment with what your soul wants and some action steps to move forward. And as well, some tips on how to move around obstacles if you find them. And I'm going to be dropping a few stories in here too, because I love to tell stories. Um, I feel like people learn from storytelling and it's just a happy place for me. So, so one of the biggest things that um, we do wrong with setting with it, well, just with living our life in general, this is actually, it's related to goal setting, but I want to talk about this first because I, I work in addition to helping to working on Claudia's team. I actually also work with a psychologist locally. And a lot of the clients that I see when they get into a bit of a dark place, they are creating they have this mind loop in their brains of the negative. It's, it's everything that's going wrong in their life or going wrong with their career, why they can't make the changes that they want to make in their life, what's going wrong with the world. I mean, if you look at Facebook and you scroll the news feed, you can literally see people making these kinds of posts and they'll be like, here's what's wrong. Here's the awful thing that happened this week. And, you know, granted, there's a few people posting pictures of food and stuff, but a lot of it's negative. And, and I tend to, I gravitate towards, towards more positive things. So like my Facebook feed has been, I've curated content that's really positive and uplifting because that's what I want in my own life. I don't want to, if I see someone who is in need, I'll 
send a prayer for them or healing or ask if I can help in some way, but I don't engage the negative in my own life. That's not what I want to create in my life. And I'm going to encourage you to just start being not a judge, but a neutral observer of the thoughts that are going on in your head on a moment by moment basis and checking in with yourself. Are they positive thoughts? Are they negative thoughts? And related to your actual physical vision, are you saying, oh, I'm blind as a bat, like if you can't find something, or, oh, I didn't see that, or, oh, I wish I hadn't seen that, or I don't want to see that. Any of these kinds of verbal sentences that we're saying to ourselves can set ourselves up for less clear vision. It literally is a mind and emotional contributing, contributing factor to blur. We don't want to see what's out there in the world, the bad stuff in the news. Uh, I don't even watch the news, by the way. I, I went on a news fast about two or three days ago. <laughs> I never got back into it. I have a weather radio. I pay attention to like the bigger stuff because on Facebook, I'm friends with some political people. And they always post stuff. So I know what's going on on a global level, but I don't depress myself about things that I really do not have the ability to change. So I stay, I do stay involved in a lot of different ways, probably more than most people, but I'm not consuming the negativity of the news. So first mistake that people tend to make is ruminating about what's not right. Um, and okay, so I, I was at a um, show recently, sometimes I once in a while I'll do a show as a clairvoyant and I'll do a talk and see some, do some sessions, really short ones. So I'm going to tell the first part of this story right now, and then I'm going to follow up on it a little bit later with another point about it. So there was a lady who came to me and she was in a really, a truly difficult, challenging place. So like, it's one thing if you're just like randomly complaining about life and the weather and stuff that you probably can't change. And it's another thing when you, she genuinely was having a hard time. She's a caregiver and she was in a super difficult position as a caregiver and she was semi-retired, but trying to maybe career shift into something that she could do in retirement. And I, it, it was hard. I was, I, she spent the first five or 10 minutes just talking about everything that was going wrong. And I, my heart, I really felt for her. I thought, ah, this is, and I thought, okay, I've got to do something. I got to like, I got to shift her out of the, her perspective. That was really, um, it was accurate it was accurate. Her, her life was challenging and a struggle. And I, but I just felt this, and I don't say desperation, but she was, she was genuinely having a hard time. And I really, I really felt for her. So I switched that around and I'm going to talk about it a little bit later, but I see this pattern of people dwelling on what's wrong in their life way too often. And it, it can, it's almost like you have fallen into a hole and then you keep digging it deeper by focusing on everything that's wrong. So how do you get out of that? Well, one of the ways is uh, focusing on what you do want to have created in your life, what you want to change this year, what you, who you want to be at the end of the year, uh, the kind of job you might want to have, the kind of relationships, quality of relationships, the changes you want in yourself, maybe in your physical appearance, maybe in your health, maybe in the hobbies and recreation and fun stuff that you do, um, any of those. So first thing I want to, let's see, I have a diagram I wanted to show you guys. Uh, I can't, well, I'm interested, might, I might have had to discuss it. We'll see. Okay, wait, here it is, here it is. Let me do share screen here. Uh, this is this one. All right. Okay. If you have write down these things if you want to. I'm just going to invite you to take some notes here. I love taking notes. I'm a note taker. So I invite you to take some notes on this little portion here. This is a, this is a smaller why in life vision because it's about envisioning what you want to create in each area of your life. And of course, these are just general areas. You are more than welcome to create new little categories here, but these are general ones. So career and purpose relationships, recreation, that's hobbies, your family and your home, your health, the community, maybe your community involvement, could be church, could be uh, volunteer work, um, donating time, personal development, that's your personal growth and, and finances. That could be like, if you're retired and don't have a career, maybe your finances and in the center, your values. So this is called a coaching mandala. Um, I use this in my sessions with folks sometimes, but a lot of times we're just using straight intuition. So for each one of these sections, 
ask yourself, and this is like a, it's called your smaller why, but ask yourself, how is my health right now? So you do an assessment first to see what is, what is my life like right now? What, what's it look like? What's my health like? What is, how is my home? Do I have a bunch of repairs that need to be done and I haven't done them, haven't had the time, or maybe I don't have the money for the repairs. Um, how are my hobbies? Do I wish I had more hobbies? How are my interpersonal relationships? Am I in a relationship that's happy, a marriage or partnership? Or am I single? Do I want a relationship or a partnership? Uh, do I, maybe I don't trust people. So maybe I don't want a relationship right now, or maybe I want to be open to that. Um, career purpose. What am I doing for my career and my purpose? So each one of these categories, you go around and you ask yourself the question, what's it like right now? So do a little self-assessment. I know we don't have time to do it all on the call, but just giving you an idea here. And then what you want to do is you want to look at what you would like to create in each area of the coaching mandala. What do you want your health to look like at the end of the year? Do you have really particular goals for your health? Do you have, maybe you want to gain weight or lose weight, or maybe you want to be more physically fit. You want to spend more time working out or going on long walks, and maybe you like to run or bike or swim. Uh, so go to each area of your life and ask those questions. What do I, if I had my dream wish for what I want my life to look like, what would it look like in each of these areas of life? And fill that out and be as detailed as you can. Dream big. This is what I really want for myself. And, and no, this is an area when you're dreaming big, don't second guess yourself. Don't judge it. Don't be negative about it. Just put it, put it on paper, write it down or, or do an art picture on it, whatever, draw it if you want to, but put there. And then put a little, add a little addendum in that for your physical vision, your eyes. How would your eyes relate to that? Like for example, I want to look in the mirror with my eyes. And I want to see myself at my ideal weight. I'm actually not really a fan of people saying they want to lose 50 pounds or whatever. I feel like your body doesn't understand numbers like that. So go for, I want a balanced, healthy body that is physically fit. That gives me the energy that I can go out and do the things I want to do in life with ease and with flexibility and with joy. And I want to see myself. I want to visualize myself in my mind, but I want to physically see myself doing these things, being active, going to places, doing the things that I want to do. Same thing with family and home. So uh, say that you have a household where your eyes, when you open up the door, maybe you see what's wrong with the house. Like you, you walk in and you say, oh, I didn't clean the kitchen counter over there. Or I didn't, when I, walk, when I first walked in, maybe I should have picked up you know, something, some shoes or something that I left by the front door or whatever, like you, you start to nitpick. So pay attention. So say to your eyes, you say, okay, eyes, what do I want to see in my home? I want to see the repairs done that I needed to do that. I keep procrastinating because maybe I don't have the time or maybe I don't have the funding for it. So, so I want to see that completed. I want my eyes to be able to welcome that. But at the same time, saying to your eyes too, you know, it's okay that there's that things aren't perfect. It's okay if my health isn't perfect, or my weight isn't perfect, or if the, the home condition isn't perfect, if there's clutter, you know, first of all, drop the judgment on yourself because it's it's kind of you're almost beating yourself back or down when you judge yourself for the things that you want to change. So part of this is this whole exercise is not about judging yourself and criticizing yourself or anybody else. It's not. It's really about focusing on what we want to create. So it's noticing the vocabulary that you're currently using and moving towards being a positive coach in your own mind. So like the same way that I'm being on this call, you can imagine yourself constructively creating in your mind a, a coach that you're your own coach. And if you, if you have a hard time being your own coach and you need practice with this, I would say create almost an avatar for yourself. So say to yourself, well, if I was going to pick a really fantastic coach for myself, you know, just in my mind, like an imaginary coach, who would that be? Like what, what figure comes into my mind? It can be like the Wizard of Oz, Glinda the Good Witch. It can be a movie character. It can be a superhero. It can be um, a, a deity or someone that you pray to. It can be um, a, for a relative that is alive or a relative that's passed away. It, it just has to be someone that you, you completely trust and you know that they have your best interests at heart. 
That's what you really want. You want someone that, that is going to be like a cheerleader for you. Okay. So and you go around the wheel like that and tie it to your physical vision as much as you can. If you're on this call and you want this this is a real start for it so okay so i want to tell, see, tell a story about mm, two i think i want to do the career purpose one oh, yeah okay so i have a career purpose story i i had a client so a couple maybe a year or two ago and she she called me with a relationship question she only had the relationship question and that was it and it was she was she had a guy that she was interested in and they were kind of dating. They lived in different countries and she wasn't in the United States. She's in another country. And, and it, I, the answer I gave her was not what she wanted to hear. I'm just going to say that. So she wasn't particularly excited about that, but she understood. I explained why and that I have her best interest at heart, but her guidance, the intuition, her guides, what I was hearing was this person was not the best person for her. And she felt that too. She already, she already knew it on an intuitive level, but it was really confirming it. She was still being hopeful and I was helping her realize, okay, there's better options for you out there. And, and that took up whatever, five, 10 minutes of the call. It was not that long. Um, and, that, and I said, do you have other questions? And she said, no, that was really the only one I had. And I heard there was other questions. So I felt it in a little bit. And I said, listen, I said, I'm hearing there's some other things in your life too that we could work with. And she... Uh, So um, I'm sorry if it's pausing occasionally, if, it, if it's not, um, if the video is not perfect, I apologize. Yeah. So, so I said, what are you doing for a career? And she said, well, I'm getting ready to study. Um, I'm going back to school. And I said, what are you studying? And she said, restaurant management. And I said, oh, and I got like, for me, like I, when I feel energy and things, when I feel frequency, I am feeling the the, the yes or the no, the good or the bad, but the alignment of the soul with what she was saying. And I did not get a resonance, a good resonance at all. I got nothing. So I said to her, okay, hmm. I said, well, what school is it? And she said, Cordon Bleu. And that's a really fancy school in cooking school over in England. And I said, okay. And you know what? And her guides got all excited. And they, I, this is what I felt. I felt her guide saying yes, yes to the school. So I said, okay, school is yes. I got a definite yes on the school. I said, but what other programs are there there that you would even be interested in? And she said, well, the chef program. Oh, they loved it. Her guides got all excited. I mean, it's literally like I could hear and feel fireworks of joy around the chef. And I asked her, I said, okay. I said, that's the right program. I said, why aren't you in that program? And she said, because oh, I actually have to stop sharing here. See, see me, sorry. She said, because I my hands shake. I have anxiety when I'm cutting food. So I worked with her on um, little tips and techniques that she could use to move past the anxiety. And I encouraged her. And she said at the end of the call, she was going to go into what her guys wanted her to do, which was going to be a chef. She wanted more than anything to bring love to people through her, through her food, through the artistry of the food. So... I, I was really, I was really happy to see that. Okay. So the next thing I want to do another um, share screen here. Okay. Well, let me talk for a second. So in addition to doing the coaching mandala, so now you're, you're going to be figuring out what your why is in, but the why being like, what I want to change in my life, why I want to change it. Coaching mandala first, that's going to be more of um, a life life overview for you and then we're going to want to look at the bigger purpose in life like really the, the why am I here what what I have so many people that I see clients that aren't sure what they want to do they're not aligned with their purpose on the planet and by the way your purpose on the planet can change like my purpose when I was in college was to be the best student I could possibly be my purpose when I was a federal park ranger was to help people understand and appreciate the natural environment and help them, you know, like see the gray whales or maybe see the killer whales or maybe see the incredible scenery of the Southwest desert. I mean, it was, it was really fun. And I, my purpose then was to be an educator and an inspiration. My purpose now is more about, it's also about education. I'm always about education and helping people be better people. So my purpose has evolved and it's about intuition and helping people be intuitive for themselves as well as giving them tips that 
because I just have a natural gift for knowing what's best for people. And it's, I always say, it's not me and my guides. It really is the, it's, I say it's their guides. Everyone has guides with them. And we'll talk about that in a little bit too. All right. So uh, if you're not sure about, hang on a second, let me bring up share screen again. Yes, yes, sorry about that. <laughs> okay, see the other one is, I'm missing my little diagram here, um, is what is called an ikigai. And the ikigai, it's a Japanese word for when your passion intersects with what you're talented at, with what you love to do. And uh, I'm gonna grab it on the other thing here. Hang on. Okay, so the introduction of what to do, and this is going to be, this is going to be something that is deep in your heart. I have noticed that a lot of people, I don't know, they they love something when they're a kid, and then they kind of give it up, give up on their dreams. Maybe they wanted to be work with animals. Maybe they wanted to work with um, numbers. There's people out there who really love working with numbers and data. So they're like favorite thing to do. Not mine, but it's their favorite thing. Um, so it's what you love to do. So you write down what I love to do and you put down a few things. Then you look at what the world needs. Like do the world, does the world need people who are good with animals or people who are good with data? Well, yeah, every one of those categories, people are going to need that. You look at uh, what you're able to be paid for. So what the world is willing to pay you for. Like, all right, is there a, a way that you could use some of your talents and interests and be paid for them? And then, and then, so it's what you love to do, basically like your passion, what you're talented at, what you're able to be paid for and what the world needs. And then it creates this beautiful flower diagram and, and it's called an Ikigai. And I can, it's um, I-K-I-G-A-I, -I -I, Ikigai. And that's a good way of align, aligning with your purpose. When you align with your purpose, life just moves on more inspirationally fulfilling level. And here's the thing, when you love what you do, you don't create blur in your life to not see the job or the career that you don't like. If you don't like your job, you're going to, you'll strain your eyes, you'll blur your vision. And this goes for anything in your life that you don't want to see. You have to really have a heart to heart talk with yourself on being willing to see what you may not always like, what you may not always agree with, but you really want to just lean into it and say, okay, I may not like what I see right now, but I accept it as it is. Acceptance is not endorsement. It just means I acknowledge where I'm at right now. And then I'm going to move forward with creating what I do want to see in my life. And for your life purpose, that's going to be creating something, something that you really love to do. Like the chef. She, she wanted to be a chef more than anything. She didn't want to go into restaurant management. It was going to be something her family would approve of, but it was not like her joy. And you want to move into your joy. Your joy is going to give you the energy and the excitement to wake up every morning and say, I love my life. I want to do this. You know, I love, like, I love being an intuitive. I love being an artist. I love working with animals. I love being out in nature. And I attempt to incorporate as many of those points of light and love and joy into my life and into how I spend my time as possible. And I invite each of you to do the same thing. I have in the past had jobs that for short periods of time that I, that ended up not being what I really wanted, you know, one reason or another, it started out really good. Shifting times. And you'll notice that this when you need to, either you need to change or the, the position needs to change. So either you can evolve within the same company or maybe you can move to something different completely because you've outgrown it or it's outgrown you. Sometimes people want to hang on too long to stuff that just isn't serving them. So I'm going to invite you to let go a little sooner and make plans that are more supportive of you and what you want to do. All right, so have a, so have a life plan that uplifts and motivates you. All right, so back to goal setting though. How do you set a really good goal? 
So you look at each area of your life. And like I said before, you're going to, you're going to be writing down what you want. What do I want in relationships? What do I want in health, home? What do I want for my life purpose? And then you want to set a goal. You want to write down a specific goal and it's got to be specific. So let's take vision, for example, because that's an easy one. Let's say you want to improve your vision this year. You might say, well, I would like to be, be specific. And first of all, know what your vision is. Know if you're a minus or a plus lens, like if you're, if you have myopia, if you have presbyopia, if you have progressives, look at your little prescription and say, so like I have, I still am working with nearsightedness. I always say I'm a complicated case. I had Lyme disease. I had a head injury from a car accident or I was hit by a drunk driver. I had a lot of grief and grieving and loss in my life, um, different health issues. And so mine is a work in progress. And I, I am super proud of the fact that I have made so much progress in my vision. But so I would say, well, I want to drop maybe not to quite perfect vision by the end of the year, because I want it to be a reasonable goal, but I want to drop at least another 1.5 diopters, let's say by, and I'll say, and you want to put a date on it. So I'll say by December 31st, I would like, and I, that's as measured myself at home on an eye chart or at a doctor's office. I know how to, Claudia teaches everybody in her courses, how to measure on measure your own vision on an eye chart. So I know how to do that. So I look at the eye chart and I want to measure my vision and then, and then have a why in there. Like, why do you want that goal? Well, I, I would love to be able to snorkel at the beach without glasses. I always list that as my main one because it really is something or without glasses, without contact lenses, you know, it's like I, I have distance vision glasses still. So I'll drive to the beach, my vision glasses and I'll get to the beach and then I have to take them off. And now my vision's a little bit blurry, not great. It's, it's, I still see plenty fine. I mean, I still have good vision. I just, you know, can't read a license plate far away and I don't need that when I'm snorkeling, but I would love to have clear vision when I'm snorkeling because once in a while there'll be a manatee that swims up to me at the beach. And I want to see that manatee clearly. And I had a, a experience one time I was um, having lunch and ran into um Congressman Bill Young, and he said, oh, you should go to the beach. He said, it's just beautiful today. So I listened to him. I went to the beach and I was swimming and I swam with four baby manta rays, like those beautiful black rays with the, the little, I forget what they're called, but the little things in the front. Unbelievable. And I never had seen manta rays. I didn't even know they had them at swimming along Clearwater Beach, but they were swimming and I was snorkeling and I was with the manta rays. So I want I love nature and being with animals, even being able to see my own pets clearly up close without having to wear my glasses. I see them up close fine, but I want, I want clarity, you know, five, 10, 15 feet. Yeah, I want full clarity. Yeah. But for, by the end of the year, I want to look. So write down your goal. What do you want your vision to seem like? How do you want it improved? If you're on plus lenses or let's say you're in readers, you want the reader's number to drop. If you're in minus lenses, you want the minus lenses to drop. And to give everybody hope here, for those of you, I, I run into people a lot who have a really high myopia prescription and they think that these techniques won't, practices won't work for them. And I want to say like holistic vision, the higher up you are, like in terms of the diopters, the quicker you'll make progress. Like you'll drop diopters really fast. You can go from a minus 11 to a minus nine in, in a few months. It's harder or slower. I shouldn't say it's harder. That's a judgment, but it seems to be slower for most people to go from like a minus one to a zero because it's just a wider gap. And that's a whole other topic. But it, I say this to, to give you patience for yourself when you're in the pro progress part. That's important. Okay. My little notes here to make sure I don't forget anything. All right, so tuning into yourself and knowing what's really best for you. If you get a little lost, listen to your heart. Put your hand on your heart and ask questions and say, like, what do I really want here? What I'm just like feel into it. I can't tell you. I, I occasionally have um, had corporations hire me to read all their employees or the all the ones that they could bring into a space, which is a lot of fun, except that. So often the employees are in the wrong job. And it's so funny. I did a whole company one time and every single employee I talked with was not, even though they loved it, they were making tons of money. They loved what they were doing. They were having fun, but they weren't in alignment with what their soul wanted for them. And um, like one example is a guy in, I won't say what he was doing. Let's, let's say sales in the company and his heart and soul wanted to be a firefighter interesting. And he had done firefighting before, but they, he got um, phased out of that job or something happened and it didn't work out. He still loved it. So I don't ever tell people, Hey, quit your job. I always say, incorporate a way to do it on the weekends, find a way to do what you love because you want to love, you want to see what you love and love what you see in your life and 
your job and your purpose is a lot of time spent doing either the right thing that you love to do, or maybe the thing that you don't love doing. Um, so I encouraged him. I said, find a way to volunteer on weekends at, with like, with some kind of fire department or something where you're doing the thing that activates the qualities that you loved most in that job, the firefighting job. If you loved helping people find a hobby or helping in some way, evenings or weekends where you can spend at least a few hours a week in that energy that you love. So I don't tell people to quit their job. And ironically, the only person who was in alignment with what their soul wanted was the owner of the company. And I, I read them last, like intuitively read them. I read them last. I said, you're my job. It was so nice. She laughed and she said, okay, as long as nobody like quits right this minute. And I said, no, I said, I didn't, I said, I didn't tell anybody to quit. I would never do that. I, I encourage people to find better options first and, you know, be, be ethical about it. Be noble about it. <laughs> Give appropriate notice. Don't just leave your job, especially if you have children or kids or um, pets to support. Okay. So what to do if you get off track? So one of the things with reaching your goals, first of all, you have, a, you have your goal and you start to make a plan for it. Then it can be action steps. So you begin to make yourself little action steps. Like say, if you want better vision, you're going to get some vision improvement. Uh, you can take a course. <sighs> Claudia, man, take Claudia's course. She's awesome. Um, I, I went through stacks of vision books and programs before I found this and this really helped me and none of the other ones had helped me before that. So that was kind of a bummer. But anyway, so if you have a goal in mind, if you need education for that goal, get the education, watch webinars, read things, um, whatever you want to do to move you forward towards that goal, but create a plan of action steps and then distill it down to um, a weekly action step that's the smallest thing you can take that's easy, that moves you towards your goal. You wanna reach your goal. So you need to distill it down to action steps that don't scare you or don't intimidate you or that aren't something that is so unpleasant that you think I'm gonna procrastinate this because I just don't like doing it. I don't wanna do that. Um, so focus on that. And... All right. Um, okay, so if you get off track, what to do? So you have your plan and then you anticipate what could go possibly go wrong. And this isn't about negative thinking. This really is about saying, well, um, I tend to be distracted. So maybe I need to set up my workspace in such a way where it really supports me so I don't get distracted. I'm not tempted or I'm not um, tempted to go and buy, let me see, like another course to help me learn how to do YouTube podcasting or whatever it is. Like you might, shiny object syndrome, people buy courses and they don't complete them. So set yourself the time to complete them. So you plan, recognize what your obstacles might be. Maybe it's distraction, maybe it's finances. <clears throat> And there's things to help with that too. And then create a plan to overcome the challenges and the obstacles so that you set yourself up for success as much as you can. And that also includes building good habits. Now there's a couple of YouTube Clear Vision Wednesdays that we've in the past where Claudia covers the um, creating good habits. So you want to create positive habits. And that goes for your vision too. This is the whole, all these practices that, Claudia brings into her courses and programs and teaches people is really about cultivating good vision habits. And this webinar, this podcast that we're talking about right now is about cultivating positive life habits, being your best friend, uplifting yourself, having goals. You really want to cultivate the action steps, the behaviors, the thoughts, and most of all, the feelings that move you into the direction of the you that you're going to become at the end of this year because you took all these steps, because you created a plan, because you created um, a kind of a little backup plan that in case there is a challenge that I have a way to overcome that challenge, I don't get sidetracked, I don't get bumped off course, I still keep moving forward. So um, I will say one thing, um, I wanna get back to the story I was telling at the beginning about the lady who came with her um, challenges with her family life. Uh, that was it, was, it was just a little bit of a trickier case and I, I want to say this, your soul has your back. In other words, our soul and our higher self is always there for us. If we tune into that, it's a guiding light. 
It's like a pilot system for us. It's always there. I pro- Even if you don't feel it, I promise you it's there. You know how I know it's there? Because I can tune into it when I talk with somebody. I feel like I tune into your guys. Your guys are always with you. You can tune into them too. I promise you, you can. So I was talking with her and I, I wanted to get her focused on something positive. And I said, okay, I said, because I needed to get her pulled out of the the drama that she was in, even though the drama was real. It was real to her and it was real when I was feeling it when she was talking to me. Um, so I, I said, well, what do you love to do? Let's talk about that for a second. And so she thought about it and she's like, named a couple different things. And I was like, no, that's not it. Name something else. No, that's not it either. I was reading the energy on, not the, the words, but the, and the frequency of what she was talking about. I never, I, she could even, I say to people, you know, you can just think it in your head and I can read the frequency on whether it's a yes or it's a no, but she was saying things. And finally she whispers something. She whispers a really low voice. She goes, am I joy? And I said, what? <laughs> I was like, I can't hear you. What'd you say? She said, and she looks around the room and she goes, it was a big show. It was really noisy. And she said, ammo jewelry. And I said, did you say ammo jewelry? And she said, yeah. And I said, oh, I said, I would never have known about this. I saw it on Etsy though over Christmas and it was it's jewelry made out of little bullets and things. It's actually really pretty and you would never, there was snowflakes and whatever. You would never know it was like a little bullet thing. But anyway, it was ammo jewelry. And I said, oh, that's interesting. Well, her guides loved the jewelry idea. So I said, okay. I said, ammo jewelry. I said, that's, and I said, it's a hobby, but focus some energy on that and get back to it. And she said, I could get back into that again. She started to perk up a little bit. And I said, okay, that's good. And then I saw something, and this is where it's interesting. I, I had an experience. I lived in Alaska when I was working on um, the Alaska State Ferry. So I would be on the ship in the Inside Passage as a naturalist. And we had this beautiful route from um, down south in southeast Alaska up to Skagway and then back down again to Ketchikan. So we did this loop across um, four or five days a week. And one of the stops, so in Juneau, where I lived, I was stationed in Juneau, we had a saloon. There was a press release to the <laughs> There was a gun hanging on the wall. And my my guides or her guides, I'm not even sure where I access it from, but the picture I got in my head was this gun. And I thought, ah, interesting. So as I tuned into the gun, the gun was owned by Wyatt Earp. And I started to into Wyatt Earp and I felt his energy come forward. And I said, oh, I said, it's interesting. I said, and I this is kind of unusual in a, in a reading. I said, Wyatt Earp's energy is coming forward. And she went nuts. She was so excited. She said, oh my God. She said, I love him. She's like, my, my brother is going to open, is planning to open a gun shop and they absolutely love him. And she said, and they want to do it right. You know, they want to do like the ID and they want to do it the, the, the right way. You know, the way she's like, he's, um, I think he's a retired federal agent and they were, she, and it was going to be where in one of the places where Wyatt Earp had lived and they were so excited. And I thought, oh my gosh, I thought, what are the chances? I thought this is so funny that his energy came in. But I say that to say that there's always guides around us and they'll step forward and help us when we need the help. So her energy shifted 180 degrees. She came in really heavy and sad and, and depressed. And then she, she was so excited. She said, I can't wait to tell my brother. This is just like, this is just the coolest thing. And I said, and I, I felt it too. I, I was really excited for her. And I thought, wow. And then later, of course, I went, and I looked up Wyatt Earp on the internet because I thought, I thought, what was his position about guns? And he was actually, they had stronger gun rules back then than we have now, which is really interesting. So in any case, I'm saying all this to say, ask for help. You know, ask for help. If you need help with vision, tap the people on, uh, on online or in your, local area who can help you improve your vision, reach out for them, but also know that there's, there's spirit guides, there's energies around you. Bates is in spirit. Now, maybe you can tap into the energy of Bates and talk with him and say, Hey, Bates, help me with my vision. But she had Wyatt Earp stepping forward as a spirit guide. And um, I'll tell another story with that. It was kind of funny. I, there was a gal who, another one, I, another person I saw in a job where she was not happy at all. And this was, um, a referral to a mental health referral to me. And she, she was not, she was, I think she was in, I don't want to know. I know I think insurance or banking or something, but anyway, some, some job where it was just regular corporate job, but she didn't, she was good at it, but she didn't really like it. She wasn't happy. So when I tuned in and I said, okay, what do you like doing that you really, really enjoy? Was she loved? I heard music and she goes, oh, she goes, I love music festivals. And I said, is there a job in there you'd be interested in? And she said, yeah, being a DJ. Oh, cool. Like she wanted to be a DJ at some of these music festivals. 
She went to the music festivals on the weekend. She was really enjoying it. And her guides were on board with that. And I said, well, okay, I'm not telling you to quit your corporate job, nor am I telling anyone on this call to quit their corporate job, the job that makes you the money. But on the weekends, on the evenings, find a way to do what you love to do and tap into it because it's going to make your soul happy and it's going to clear your vision. Promise. So she, so I, the guy her interestingly was um avici there is a dj he's actually in spirit now and i am not like a big huge music person but he stepped forward for her and she started crying she was she huge fan of his now it's so funny because i don't know that these people know who are going to know who i'm talking about but when the energy comes in and i can feel it i get I, even right now i get goosebumps every inch of my body is covered in goosebumps when i tune into these energies and match them up with people. And she was so excited. And so she, another one left that session with a new joy of life. She was enthusiastic. She wants to move forward with at least incorporating more of her life purpose and life passion than she had thought of before. So, all right. Um, and then lastly, okay. So statistically proven ways to set achievable goals. You want to set um, specific goals. You want to write them down. You want to tell people who are supportive. You want to surround yourself with people who act the way that you want to be. So if they are, you want to be more healthy, be around people who are healthy or get together with other people who have the same goals and move in that direction, get a habit tracker, get a journal. You want to make a plan. You want to have um, support from a coach, a mentor, some kind of an accountability partner. We're here for you in the vision community on Clear Vision Wednesday every single week, bringing in guest speakers and information and curated content that helps you move forward on your vision goals. We are, we're really excited about that. We're actually starting our, if you're watching the replay still before March or so, we are starting our Claudia signature program in March and that is, it's a fabulous opportunity to invest in your vision on a larger scale and to really have that clarity in your life that you want. So I totally encourage you guys to attend that. Uh, let's see, any other, any other story I want to tell? Nope. Oh, all right. Um, I want to say to each of you, I believe in you. If you're on, if you're listening to this call and you've gotten to this point, it means that you cared about yourself enough to want to make a change in your life. I want you to become your own best advocate so that you take the steps to live the life that you want to live, action steps, build better habits, find support when you need support, be the person that when a problem comes up, you're the solution finder. You say to yourself, okay, I have a problem. I'm going to come up with a solution. And then every time, whenever I have something, a little bump in my life, I'm like, okay, I had a bump in my life. I will find a way around this. And I, I always, man, things always manage to work out. You survived every bad or good thing that ever happened to you. And here you are. So you will get through whatever it is you need to get through, create the life of your dreams. I want to see happy, healthy people on the planet. That is really my wish for everybody. And that is what I do most. I try to help people live their happiest. happiest life. All right, you all. So we have coming up in uh, February, Clear Vision Wednesday is going to be our, our month theme is going to be immaculate degeneration. So we're going to have a lot of doctors talking about ways that you can prevent it, ways that you can work with what you have. And in the end, hopefully achieve clear vision for yourself in your life, well, your life purpose, and in your eyesight, all of the above, what you want for your life. All right, everyone, I, Claudia will be back next week. And I thank you for listening to me and being here. If you have questions, write them on the YouTube comment area. I will comment back to everybody who writes to me. And if you want to find me, I'm on Facebook, Trisha Kirby. I am on my website, trishakirby.com. Oh, I'm running a special too for the new year until I remember to take it down off of my website. It is uh, on the little book online, book on book online session page. I never do 30 minute consults, but if you want a 30 minute session, I will get as much accomplished in 30 minutes as I can. But that's very rare that I do that. And I will be taking it down at the end of this. Oh, actually it is the end of the month. Okay. I'll give you guys a week maybe I'll be maybe I'll do it till Valentine's Day I don't know I love Valentine's Day even though I'm perpetually in love with life so thank you everybody thanks for attending I wish you guys the best and you know big hearts